All right, here we have a cute little citizen with the uh, mandibular beak overgrowth. Uh, I forgot that's going on anyway. We're going to uh, trim the bottom beak a little bit. We're going to try some some uh, rather non-invasive physical therapy for about two days, and if that makes a difference, then Mama save yourself some money. If not, then we'll have to go do some minor surgery and actually build this upper beak up enough to where the bottom beak will actually stay in place. But today, I'm going to just trim this little point right there, okay? And then we're going to actually start to tape the beak into place a little bit at a time. But mom has to be very, very careful because if this guy vomits with his beak like that, then that'd be bad news. Okay, so you cannot leave him taped if you are not there watching him constantly. So I agree. I understand. <laughs> she, she's nodding yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Now it's uh, phase one. Go to phase two. <laughs> See, I'm not feeding him. I hate feeding him. Baby. All right. So what we've done is we've trimmed, trimmed the bottom beak. And I've actually put the, the beak in place. This guy's actually got a full crop, so this always makes me nervous to do something like this. But we're actually going to go ahead and tape it. And, uh, and it's easy enough to do. As you can tell, this guy's so stressed out. I'm like, dude, what's on my face? Get that off my face. But anyway, in theory, what's happening is, uh, while this is going on, the pressure from the upper beak is making the bottom beak curl in more. And the pressure from the bottom beak is actually pushing the upper beak out more. And if we do this for a few hours a day, say, you know, two or three hours on, hour off, two or three hours on, then we may be able to completely forego any surgery or, or making of a whole upper beak for this. So this is, a, this is kind of an experiment. This guy's young enough to where this actually just might work. So that's what I'm hoping. Save mom some money, save bird some stress, and all will hopefully be well. Maybe the next set of videos do this guy will show him with a normal beak. Woohoo! All right, this little cutie's waking up for some anesthesia. Very mild, but we had to do that. If you'll notice that little pin right there in the center, we had to put them down just long enough to get that piece in there to hold this into place. Um, anyway, what happens is this guy's got what they call prognathia, where his lower beak is much longer than his upper beak. So we had to build something that would train his mouth to go back in. The uh, little tape trick just didn't work. And this is pretty much where we're at for now. Oh, show him. Show him. Your Durani nose. Yeah. So there we go. I smoothed it up as good as best I could without letting it get so thin that it wouldn't work. All right. Very good. So this is probably the first of a few installments, and we'll get to see how this bird's beak trains to go back the way it's supposed to normally. All right. So far, so good. This will be a cool case. All right. This is a little white icon here. It's been two weeks, hasn't it? Last Thursday. So, no. Okay, no. So, a little bit over a week, but anyway. Oh, look. Anyway, we're trying to uh, take care of his uh, pronathism. What that means is his lower beak is longer than the upper beak. And we actually built this little prosthetic device here to make sure that his lower beak only has one place it can go. And I just did a little bit of trimming. And if you watch here, that looks like a perfect bird beak right there. He's going, dude, dude. Get that out of my face. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. So we'll check it again next week. And we may actually remove that next week. Cool. You may get that lucky. This is not a pistachio. A pistachio. See? <laughs> <laughs> That <laughs> Take three. <laughs> this is not a pistachio seed. This is actually a fake beak or a prosthesis that belonged to this bird. For he has prodathism, which means that his lower beak was longer than his upper beak. So what we did was we put this little piece here on his beak. He turns out Let me show you and trained his beak to actually go in normally like you see there. Look, what a good bird. What a good bird. Yeah, you are. So that's that case. I'm going to go show him to mom, see what we've done. Okay. All right, here's our little buddy, our little uh, pronathic bird. Yeah, do you have a big name? We should call you Prog for short. Yeah, that'd be a good name for you. Yeah, and you're nodding yes. You like that name, huh? I know you do. I know you do. Hey. 
Anyway, back here, it's this little, not a pistachio seed. <laughs> oh, dude, what is that? See, that was on my face. I almost miss it. I almost miss it. Anyway, another good uh, happy ending. This guy so far, if he continues the way he's going, we will have a normal beak. And if he just learns how to trim it normally, which means I usually would get that by one trial and error or two watching other birds, you know, do some, some preening and mom's hiding behind the carrier over there. We'll let her keep hiding. But anyway, so this guy's a nice happy ending. Oh, look, and he even uses it relatively normally. Want to bite the doctor? It's your last chance. <laughs> anyway, what a cutie. Yeah, I cutie. I am a cutie. Yes, I am. I'm a cutie. Yeah. What a baby. <laughs> All right.